Trust people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Let no flesh be glorified in your presence. Let Jesus and him alone be seen. Jesus and him alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Give God a big hand clap and please be seated. Hallelujah. Again, I bless the name of the Lord for the privilege to one last time for this crusade to bring the word of the Lord. And um, tonight, I'm not really preaching. Tonight is a final charge. Just blessing and encouraging our hearts one last time. It's been an eventful moment for me, as you can imagine, and I believe for all of us here, it's been three days of life-altering, history-making activities, and we give God the praise from the word, the visits, and all that has been done. And I thought to just wrap up by charging our hearts, but first I want to start by giving thanks and giving glory to God. The Bible says it is a good thing to thank the Lord, to give thanks to the Lord. It is one thing to desire to do a thing, but it is another thing to be engraced by God, to make it happen. And for this, we return thanks to the Lord. It's always been my burden and joy and desire to extend this grace that God has so lavishly given and I thank God for the privilege that he's granted us to go from region to region to nation from nation to nation taking the saving the healing and transforming power of Jesus but then I became very burdened recently and it was a very sincere desire to see that we bring this experience even to our homeland. And um, for a few years now, I've had a number of groups and ministries, you know, sincerely intending to invite me over. Um, but for various reasons, principally my schedules, um, it would not allow me to come and honor the program. Um, but then something very interesting happened this year and I want you to listen very carefully that really is the foundation for what we are doing now and um, haven't had several attempts from different groups different ministries just wanting to extend an invitation to come bless the land I was in Jalingo sometime this year to minister for the Anglican Communion. It was a program. And while I was there ministering, a man sat not too far from me alongside his dear wife. And whilst the introductions and salutations were ongoing, I was told that this was the Bishop of Langtang Diocese. And I looked with joy and excitement seeing someone who had now come from my area and we exchanged pleasantries 
and I was very excited to see him and I told him I said when you go back please take my love and my blessings and my greetings to my dear people and then he now communicated in a later conversation his desire to have me come down for a program I think an annual program or so and it just stirred up a fire in me and I said no there have been too many groups trying to bring me over and now that Bishop has graciously extended an invitation I think that I see it as a Macedonian call a call by God to just come and contribute our own quarter in helping the spiritual upliftment of the Tarok nation and so that was the motivation that led to a series of events and um, by the privilege of God's grace we called for a meeting in just one time I was there and Bishop graciously came and all the other groups that had been desiring to host me here and I said look I know that hosting me here would be an event that is bigger than any individual and any individual ministry so let us shelve all the individual meetings that we have and trust God to be able to create a neutral platform that provides an opportunity for the convergence of the entire Tarok nation we have the stadium as about the largest facility that can host this and um, that was our conclusion then in a later meeting they graciously came even over to my house in Abuja and there we constituted a central working committee and the result is what we now celebrate today and I decided to say this so that we can bring glory to the name of the Lord chances are excellent that after a very successful crusade like this it is very human to point hands at a person and believe that all of this has happened because of apostle and it is important that I state here that there is no man who deserves to take the glory in this crusade it is very clear that nobody has the singular power to put together a meeting like this and converge this plethora of distinguished personalities to come before Jesus not apostle and not any other person so let me start tonight by giving the glory to him when you see what has happened in this crusade you know that there is no man there is no no man who has the power to make this happen and we lift up our hands to Jesus who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to say thank you thank you for what you have done thank you for your grace thank you for everything in the name of Jesus Christ I felt stirred in my heart to do this even before I begin my final charge. It is important that I deeply, deeply appreciate these people. We set up a central working committee to just help us coordinate things and it was led by the able leadership of the bishop and his wife and strangely they both have been quiet and very almost inactive all through the process. Of the entire crusade and I find that very instructive because if you are chairing a committee that has been set up to put a large program like this chances are excellent that you would want to be at the center stage so Bishop I'm standing on behalf of Jesus to celebrate you and thank you and your wife thank you so much for your humility I appreciate and I honor you most sincerely hallelujah I also want to thank all of the various groups that literally sacrificed their programs I understand the, there are various groups Daniel and his um, the Omni worship crew they usually would have their programs but you can see that all those sacrifices were made so that will lift up the name of Jesus so I salute him and his dear crew the Omni worship team may the Lord bless you for all that you have done and then a dear gentleman Ernest and his team um, we thank them very much for all that they have done coordinating prayers and I must sincerely appreciate Barista Gregory Lar thank you so much it's been it's been so instrumental and we thank him Kelvin Yilme
God bless you and thank you so much Barrister Selman Musa thank you so so much we honor and we deeply deeply appreciate all who have come to play roles great and small I want to particularly honor all of our fathers and elder statesmen in the Tarok land thank you I have been humbled by your presence all through the three days they have been here represented in their various capacities we honor you for what you represent we are not a people of dishonor we discern your sacrifices for the land and for the nation we thank you our generals our elder statesmen we thank you i'm aware also that there have been several politicians members of parliament that have been here scattered around we honor you in the name of jesus christ for what you represent and let me also sincerely appreciate our traditional council we had we had a, a very history making humbling session with them this afternoon it meant so much for me please let's give them a big god bless you thank you so much Ponjizini and the entire traditional council we honor you and we sincerely celebrate and appreciate you and I will not fail to honor the servants of Jesus Christ who labor day and night in this land if it was not for their labor like Punjil rightly said we will not come and meet Christians in this land we have not come as proof of almightiness and proof of power we have only come as contributors to what is already happening in the land the revival the salvation the transformation therefore i like to honor our fathers veterans in the gospel every church every assembly that names the name of jesus upon the tarok land we honor you can we give them a big 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 god bless you praise the name of the lord I want to honor and appreciate my own biological father and my family. He's been here all through the period of the crusade, seated quietly. I really don't know where he is scattered here, but wherever you are, Daddy, God bless you and honor you. Please honor my father for me and honor my siblings. They are here. Sadly, my mother could not make it, but I have to give him that honor. Praise the name of the Lord. And finally, I want to honor you, you who is seated. And I'm not, I'm not a politician. This is not a manifesto. This is, a, this is sincerely from my heart. It is one thing to be anointed. It is one thing to be graced. But it is another thing to have people who can listen to you. The Bible says, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. But I have received about the greatest honor in my life right here among my own people Ningchi, thank you thank you thank you for your honor thank you for the sacrifice thank you for all that you have done i i want to also thank our security operatives how could i forget that all of our generals and all of the the great people who have helped thank you so much dr ibrahim dogonyaro thank you so much with the dss Thank you so much, Colonel Wuyeb, and all who have played very great roles to make this happen. I sincerely appreciate their love and everything that they have done. The Lord bless, the Lord increase in the name of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, when the vision of this crusade was put, I, I thought it wise that it would not be complete to just come and preach and pray for the sick and minister deliverance um, I just thought that it was important to at least do something and so in the course of the preparation we sent word that um, I desire to do something small to build a few boreholes just to help solve the problem of water and please listen please listen this is for the glory of the name of the Lord and so we decided to do a few boreholes and graciously Ponji brought an advice that was a wise one and he said instead of building a few boreholes across the chiefdoms and omitting others that may not be a very wise and balanced expression of love for the nation in, 
the Tarok nation in its entirety. And so heeding to that wise counsel from a father, we decided to extend the boreholes to every chiefdom. So every chiefdom has had that borehole built right now to the glory of the name of the Lord. It is not to make a name for any man. It is as a contribution and then also to be an inspiration to all the noble sons and daughters in the Tarok land that we may not be able to do everything, but we can do something. Hallelujah. And the last of them, I think one of the boreholes is just at the back of the stadium, I'm told. And tomorrow, by God's grace, we would, in the presence of the traditional council, just commission that as a point of contact to all the other boreholes and dedicate it to the glory of the Lord and to the blessing of the entire Tarot nation. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. It was also burdened in my heart like I shared yesterday for those of you who were here. And this I also shared with our, our elders and our, our kings at the traditional council. That it was important for us to see how we could invest a bit at least even if it was in education. I believe that education is one of the principal keys that provide for transformation. And I know that there are well-meaning people. There are some of you who are sincere. You want to go to school. You want to give your best. But the financial wherewithal is not there. And I know that several people cutting across the religious divide, politics, and all of that may have made contributions in whatever way. And I thought that even if I may not be able to do everything, at least let us be able to give one person that hope. And so we decided to see how we can set up a little fund and commit the sum of 10 million naira to just support the education of the average Tarok child. We don't know how far that will go, but at least it is fair that we start something. So that for someone, we, we intend that with this fund, they will go around all our primary and secondary schools and source for well-performing students who do not have the wherewithal to continue and see how we can give them that push to go right to see how they can even earn degrees i think that is a very worthy pursuit praise the name of the lord now i announce all these things for the sake of integrity but also to inspire us that everybody can do something when I had the privilege of speaking with the traditional council, one of my charge and encouragement is that every notable Tarok son and daughter scattered across this nation and around the world, it is, it is ethical that as God leads us and as God helps us, out of the abundance of the influence and the resources, there should be a token that will be committed back to our fatherland for the development of this land. The Tarok nation will not be developed by foreigners. It will take men and women who have that passion. And you know, as I do, that God has lifted and blessed and honored several notable Tarok sons and daughters across the globe. It is time, therefore, that every one person, and let this truly be a clarion call by the privilege of the message of God, that in our lifetime, if we ever taste of anything that represents success, we must have the fortitude to contribute something to the development of our motherland. This land is in desperate need of development. And I did suggest here and even to the traditional council, it is my dream and my prayer that through a coordinated effort, I do not know how it will happen. But that God will grant us the privilege of situating a university in a Tarok land. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that we do not have our people go out of the land and out of the nation to be educated and lose the heritage. It is important when there is education and when there are institutions, it will stimulate development, it will stimulate investment. This is how nations are transformed. I have not said this to make a name for myself, not at all. I have not said this as a political manifesto, I'm not a politician at all. I have only said this to inspire us 
and for the records and for the purpose of integrity but i stand here to say there is nobody who deserves the glory let me charge you therefore that after this crusade no one should go around singing the praises of apostle there is only one name that deserves to be heard in the tarot land there is only one name there is only one name with power to say with power to say show our honor to those who today have joined the cloud of witnesses in this land we have had men and women of God who served and died in this land we have had veterans across the education sector across security across several divides many of them have died today many of them gave their blood many of them gave their knowledge they gave everything and so in one minute as a responsible people i like us to give honor to them in the presence of jesus christ may i please request for a minute silence to honor the heroes of the tarot land who have done so graciously in the name of jesus christ We pray that their gentle souls rest in perfect peace. And we pray that we become and remain extensions of their legacies in whatever area that they showed us that path to greatness, whether it's in education, whether it's in politics and governance, whether it's in the military, whether it's in rulership, whether it's in church and religion, in whatever area. We decree and declare that their labor will not fail in our time. That we become extensions of their legacies in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Please be seated and God bless you. Tonight my charge to us is very simple and very clear. Just a few minutes and then by the grace of God we will pray. This is our last session together. And may I plead with you that you kindly lend me your attention as we receive this final charge from Jesus. I'm teaching tonight on a topic I title United We Stand. I want to charge our hearts one final time on an increased need for unity. 
unity among ourselves that in unity there is so much we'll be able to do even together like i said earlier on i was very humbled having the session with our kings and the traditional council and the humility the display of love togetherness and the passion to see the Tarot Nation go forward was most humbling. And it will never tire me to say thank you again to the traditional council. In Genesis chapter 11 and verse 6, Genesis chapter 11 and verse 6, the Bible leaves for us a very interesting story there that is most instructive. This was the story of a man called Nimrod, the son of Cush. The Bible says that Nimrod began to lead a campaign and he charged the hearts of the people to build a city whose power will reach the top of the heavens. This was a scripture that most graphically shows us the power of unity because in this scripture, Satan was not mentioned. In this scripture, the Holy Spirit was not mentioned. The only thing mentioned in this scripture was men and their ability to coordinate themselves together to build something that was powerful and the bible shows from this scripture that nothing could stand a united people who decided to build follow me please as we read together the bible says and the lord said let's go back to verse three let's start from verse three very quickly can you please back up to verse three the Bible says, Nimrod Kush led this team of people and they said, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. They said, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Bible says something very interesting. They had not started the building, but simply because they agreed together. The Bible says, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And here is what God himself said. The power of unity. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. So that is the secret. It was not just their creativity and the dexterity of their engineering proficiency. It was that the people were one. It says, the Lord said, behold, the people is one. And they all have one language. And this they begin to do. And here's what God himself said. And now, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined under the platform of unity to do. The people is one. They have one voice. They have one language. And this they begin to do. And he says nothing will be restrained from them. There is no society. There is no nation that is built outside of unity. What does it mean to be united? Unity means a state of being one and a state of togetherness unity also means to be in agreement you are united to the degree to which you are in agreement unity means to have one voice unity means to be motivated by the same purpose unity means to have the same goal so when we talk about being united, it means that we are together. It means that we are one. It means that we are in agreement. It means that we have the same motivation as a people and a nation. And that we have one goal. Several places in scripture, we find that the Bible encourages individuals, families, territories to be and to stay united and the bible is not ashamed to reveal to us that our strength as a people is hinged on our ability and fortitude to be united i want us to look at a few scriptures very quickly 
And then I'll share with us a few principles that make for unity. Number one, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Paul the Apostle was admonishing the church in Corinth. And he said that we speak the same thing. I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. And then we look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. If the media can help us so that we save time very quickly. Just go to Philippians 2.2. 2. I'm not sure you got my scripture. Philippians 2.2. 2. It says, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love and being of one accord and of one mind. Fulfill ye my joy, Paul is speaking, that you be like-minded of the same mind. And then let's look at Acts, the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 32. Most instructive. This was the early church that they went forward and they advanced today we are recipients and beneficiaries of this state of unity that was initiated during the early church. It says, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought, that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they all had all things in common. When you read, it tells you that they came together in one accord meeting every day and praying in unity ecclesiastes chapter 9 let me add one more scripture we'll read from verse 9 to 12 ecclesiastes chapter 9 chapter 4 i meant to say ecclesiastes 4 from verse 9 to 12 ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9 to 12 let us now listen to the wisdom of the preacher it says two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. Next verse. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Next verse. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? For if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Scriptures that talk about unity. It is important for us to understand that in division, in seditions, we will never be able to thrive and to advance as individuals, as families, and as a people. Even as a nation, as a continent, it will take unity. Now let me say something. Unity does not mean doing the same thing. Unity means motivated by the same goal. We will never be able to do the same thing, but that our motivations can be the same. There must be unity among the men and the women of God upon our land. There must be unity among the politicians and those who are in governance. There must be unity among our elder statesmen and veterans. There must be unity even among um, our traditional council and so on and so forth. There must be unity among clans and families. In our unity is our strength. Now, it is easy and very cheap to talk about unity. But I submit to you that unity is hard work. And that unity does not happen arbitrarily. There are principles that if violated, 
will never produce a united people. This is where I plead that you lend me your undivided attention because it is not enough to plead the case of unity upon our land. It is important for us to understand the principles that we must keep. I have studied the subject of unity as a leader, as a man of God, as one who has seen the benefit of being united. And I found out that many people talk about unity without talking about the principles that must be kept. Unity is a reaction. Something must be done to equal unity. Just to say we should be united is not enough. There are principles that if violated will continue to spell division. But if honored and kept, then we have signed the path for unity. Please follow carefully as I show you by scripture. Three or four keys that I have found from scripture that will be responsible for the unity of individuals, of families, of territories, and even of our land. Are you ready? Number one, the first key that is responsible for unity in our land and in our lives is love. There can never be unity until there is love. In John chapter 13 and verse 35, John chapter 13 and verse 35, Jesus himself was speaking and he began to charge us on the cause of love. And here's what he said. By this shall all men, how many men? All men, know that ye are my disciples. Not when you preach well. Not when you heal the sick. Not when you acquire degrees. Not when you rise to the zenith of your profession. By this singular act shall all men know that you are my disciples. It says, if ye have love to one another. I have studied a bit about love. And God bless my parents for giving me the name that means the way to love. What a powerful name. I appreciate and I honor that name every day. The more I transit, the more I grow in leadership, I appreciate the power of that name. Hallelujah. Love. I have found out that true love does not have a reason. The moment you have a reason for loving, it is not true love. Genuine love does not have a reason. In fact, having read books by men of God, philosophers, and having listened to intellectuals and studied their materials and dissertations around and across the subject of love, I came to a conclusion that I would need to formulate a definition of love for me. Here is my definition of love, the absence of self. That for me has proven to be the most potent scripture-based definition of love. And this I drew from the very sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The real definition of love is the absence of self. That means you can measure how much the love of Jesus and how much love is at work in you to the degree to which self is absent. And the moment there is self, you can literally use the index of self to measure how much love you have. When it becomes about me, when it becomes about myself, what is in need for me? What will I gain? What name will I make? There is no love in it. Genuine love does not see it as a thing of embarrassment to sacrifice self for the larger good of others. The first key to unity, therefore, is that we must embrace this definition of love. There is only so much I can do if it will benefit me alone. Do you know, psychologists tell us that there are six indices that measure fulfillment. And one of them is contribution. The degree to which your life is adding value to people will bring you fulfillment as a person. Everything God gave man 
only finds joy when it serves a cause larger than itself. We farm here where a people who are skilled in farming. I want you to please help me answer this question. How many of you have seen a maize plant eating itself? How many of you have seen an orange tree eating its fruit? How many of you have seen any plant at all? When you go to the farm and plant when it grows, the joy of that plant is to see that it is able to make its contribution. Love. Look at the labor that the mango tree, the orange tree, the purple tree goes through. There are trees that will spend years. We have trees that are decades old upon our land. And year after year, they continue to produce. Some of them 30 years, some of them 50 years, and none of them have tasted of their fruit themselves. And yet they are content that we continue to take from them. Love is the absence of self. The moment it becomes about me, apostle, about me, then we never will be able to truly walk in love. We must learn to look beyond ourselves and look beyond the momentary and the temporary comfort. We must be guided by number one, the fear of the Lord. Two, conscience. Three, a sense of posterity. Great leaders are guided by these three principal convictions. The fear of the Lord, conscience, and then a sense of posterity. The first key to promoting unity in the Tarok land is to promote love. And it is everyone's business. I must be able to love beyond the walls of partisan divides, beyond the walls of religion, beyond all kinds of prejudices. It is important for us to embrace love. Everybody please shout love. One more time say love. Number two very quickly. Now this is very, very important. The second key that is responsible for unity across any life, any family, any institution, and largely our land, is mutual honor. Please write it down and listen very carefully. Mutual honor. This has been neglected. Nations have gone to war because of the absence of mutual honor. Families have gone to war because of the absence of mutual honor. What is honor? Let me define honor. Honor is the discerning, the celebrating, and if need be, the rewarding of an individual as touching their difference, as touching their sacrifices, and as touching their proficiency. I will come again. That honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of men, systems, institutions for their difference, for their contribution. It is difficult, very, very difficult to find this unity in an environment where all the parties involved make it as a covenant to honor the sacrifices of one another. Now, please look up. Let me say this. This is a plague in Africa. Respectfully speaking, this is a plague in Nigeria. We downplay the sacrifices of many. You cannot downplay the sacrifice of another, the contribution of another, and expect unity. No. When I came into this land, I was... I was so greatly honored and appreciated and I was humbled by the honor I received from fathers, from great people within this land. And it will only be wise for me to reciprocate that honor. The moment you are shown honor, you must find a way of reciprocating it. Reciprocating it. Honor can never be complete being one-sided. Parents, honor your children. Children, honor parents. Leaders, honor subjects. Subjects, honor leaders. Intellectuals, honor those you think are illiterate. 
and those who are illiterate honor those who have paid the price to gain knowledge listen we must be discerning over the sacrifices of many yesterday when i came and i sat there i saw this great man dr panam and as he was ministering i was looking at him and many people i know that we know as a state the great contribution that this man has made to the worship ministry here on the plateau and even in this nation and across the question is do you recognize and discern it enough to honor it there are ministers of the gospel within this land that have been dishonored there are veterans across different divides in this land that have been dishonored listen to me if we want to see honor we must we must be able to we want to see unity we must make our honor mutual that if you honor me as a man of god then i must honor you as your son and i must honor you as my parents too that even though i am a man of god i am still a son of the soil and i must be able to let the world know that we are not we are not orphans and we are not bastards and so i must show that honor is that true no matter what we become no matter where god takes us it is important for us to know that when honor is mutual then you have created the bridge for unity as a leader i am very vocal to honor my people you know, um, as a ministry, we're on break now. I decided to give my people break because it's usually a very tasking year for us as a ministry. And I just decided to give them a break so they go and spend time with their children, their families, as we prepare for a, a very busy year coming. And I intended to come for this crusade not to bother them. That's why we just set up. We said we'll come here and meet whatever team we can find here and make do with what whatever it is that we find here only for me to arrive this land and i saw my people they refused to go home by themselves they came i was looking at them and i was almost saying what in the world are you doing here honor now they have come here because they honor me as their man of god and they they constrain their time to be resting they now sacrifice their time to be here i will be a stupid man of god if I stand and I brag and I say, that's right, you, are, I, you can see. No, I must reciprocate that honor. Even though they are my people and they honor me, I must also tell them thank you for that sacrifice. When honor becomes mutual, then there must be unity. Are we learning? A dear precious friend and brother I was flattered when I saw him he passed us the house on the rock church in Joss Reverend Akila and his dear wife and I only got word that he was on his way coming to this place he's not a Tarok man and yet on hearing that there was a crusade here an apostle was in his place here he left everything and came with his wife and he's been here since yesterday and he's here seated now that is honor and i must be able to reciprocate that honor to him and tell him thank you and this is what i'm saying now thank you sir you and your dear wife for that sacrifice and that discernment there are many many people here who have laid down their personal comfort and everything to do my wonderful instrumentalists here some of them flew down from lagos I, I told them to go and rest. I mean, they had gone for the year. Only for me to find out that they were on their way coming here. And I said, my God, what are, what are you people doing? And you drive them and send them back, they will not go. They will stay till the end of this crusade. Never take people for granted when they are loyal to you and they love you sincerely. Men of God, hear this. Go back to your church on Sunday and before you preach, tell your members, thank you. Don't say I'm a man of God. If you like, leave my church. You talk like that, your church will be empty. Tell them thank you. We must be unashamed to communicate the contribution of men. 
in this place my face is the face that you see preaching but there are people setting up this sound there are security people up and down some of these people have labored day and night when we are sleeping they are awake to ensure that we are safe not just the facility even my own personal security you see them running up and down some of these people are people at the highest level in the army they shouldn't be doing what they are doing but for the sake of jesus and for the honor they have for me even though high-ranking people in the military they decided to submit themselves to run around as though they just got into the army that is honor i must tell them thank you is someone learning now you are going to look at the person by your left and right and tell him thank you for the gift of you in my life whether you know him or not are you ready Say it in Tarok, say it in Hausa, say it in whatever language. One, two, go. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. If it's your wife, tell her thank you. Don't say I've married you, I paid your dowry. Say thank you. Go ahead. We are not stopping. Say thank you. Say thank you to another person. And now together, let's say thank you, Jesus. To honor the one who has so honored us in this crusade. Ten naira, give him hundred naira because he's doing more than what I am doing. Are we learning tonight? Children, go back home this night, not tomorrow, and go and meet your father and say, Baban Dengchi. He will say, For what? Tell him, I returned from a crusade with a new orientation for the Tarot nation that in gratitude and honor lies our unity. Husbands, honor your wives. Don't say, I married you. Cook for me. I paid your dowry in the presence of your parents. Mm -mm. Wives, say thank you to your husbands. When God gives you a responsible man who is not an armed robber, say thank you. Parents, tell your children thank you. When they bring a good result, don't look at them and say, what do you think I paid your school fees for? Tell them I'm proud of you. God bless you and thank you. You hardly criticize anybody you honor. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I honor you. Now you use that and you will see how many doors will be open. There are some of you seated here. Some of our great fathers and great veterans have helped you. They've done things because of them you went to school. Because of them you got married. Because of them you got a job. You have never found a need to go back and honor them. An entitlement mentality. After all, he's my uncle. Go back this night or tomorrow. Find a gift and go and tell them, Uncle, I've sinned against you. Ten years ago, you sent me to the university. Now I am a doctor or professor and I have not come to tell you thank you. I'm going down my knees to say now I have learned my lesson. Yafemi, I am sorry. Let me tell you the reason why many blessed people find it hard to support people. Because of ingratitude and dishonor. If I give you 10 naira and you do not appreciate it and come back to me, I will send you away. Can I tell you this? When you practice gratitude and honor, you create the bridge for assistance again the next time. In fact, in the presence of honor, you don't need to make a request again. Your honor itself will open you up to another door. Please do not trivialize anyone. Any day and anywhere you go, and whether it is the young, the old, the person you despise today may be the person to feed you tomorrow. Honor all men. Do not despise our kings. Do not despise the politicians. Do not despise the fathers. Do not despise the young people. I know some of them may not be behaving well. Some of them may be behaving stubborn. In as much as we desire them to improve, we must let them know that we honor them. Number three. What is the third key that sponsors unity? The third key is called forbearance. Hmm. 
forbearance forbearance is more than forgiveness please look up for as long as you are human from the start of your life until the end of your days somebody must offend you and you must offend someone no matter how anointed no matter how holy no matter how careful somebody must offend you and you must offend someone all men are men the best and the greatest of us we are still men when you have that at the back of your mind it becomes the sponsor for forgiveness and for forbearance i will tell you the difference shortly when jesus was leading us to pray here is what he said he said forgive us our trespasses as we forgive theirs those that trespass against us for as long as you are living in the midst of people you will find yourself offending someone and someone will find themselves offending you especially if you are a leader ask every leader here under the sound of my voice 24 hours is too long until someone offends you whether as a preacher whether as a politician whether as a royal father whether as an elder statesman, whether as a mother, a father, spouses will offend themselves. Parents and children, family members, business people, politicians, royal fathers, all men. There is nobody here under the sound of my voice who has not offended someone in his life. And there is nobody under the sound of my voice who has not been offended. Forgiveness is very powerful. Forgiveness is the highest form of giving. You can give cars. You can give houses. But forgiveness is a kind of giving. It is a painful kind of giving. That's why it means a lot to the Lord. When you forgive, you have shown the excellency of your wisdom and the excellency of of your maturity now let me define forgiveness forbearance and contrast them very quickly forgiveness is the fortitude and the strength the emotional strength to be able to let go and to provide pardon over someone who has offended you it takes strength emotional strength it takes maturity it takes wisdom it takes thoughtfulness to forgive but now let me tell you about forbearance this is the harder part forbearance is not just forgiving forbearance means creating a system of accommodation for that weakness because it will happen again and again and again hallelujah I remember a man who told me that he had a problem with his wife and I said why he said the woman talks too much and so when I sat down with them I said madam here's what your husband is saying what he's saying what do we do about this now and the woman knelt down and said I'm sorry and the man said I forgive you I said stop you are making a mistake you don't need to forgive her she will talk again what you need is forbearance Forbearance means create a permanent system of accommodating that weakness. There are many people you don't need to forgive. You need to create forbearance. Is someone learning this tonight? Forgiveness can be as a result of a mistake that happened once. Forbearance is creating a permanent system of accommodation. A talkative will always be a talkative. A quiet person will always be... A woman will always be, say amen. A man will always be, a child will always be, a father will always be, an elder will always be. Children do not expect elders to be children. They are old. They have an advantage of wisdom. Elders do not expect children to be elders. They are children. Give them time to grow. Allow life to teach them the lessons it taught you so that they will grow. Forbearance. 
a politician will always be forbearance. A man of God will always be an academician will always be Are we learning? We must learn to forbear. More than forgive. Forgiveness is important. But we must learn to forbear. There are people there is nothing you can do about. They are just the way they are. If that person is your husband, forbear. Your wife, forbear. Your son, forbear. Do you know that Elijah was a temperous man? Have you read your Bible? Do you know that Elijah was a temperous man? How do you think Elisha followed Elijah until he received his mantle? Don't blame the sons of the prophet for being angry. Their leader was a hard man and they said, go to heaven. Go wherever you are going and give us peace. But Elisha said, I will follow. Elisha, you are stupid. Yes, sir. I'm still following. I know what I'm looking for. And at the end of it, can I tell you? Some of the most discomforting people in your life are the ones that carry the graces you need. You must learn to endure. Mama may be shouting at you every time, but she has an anointing. The day she prays for you, she will open up your life. Forbear the shouting and be discerning until you receive the grace. We live in a world where people expect godlike perfection from men. Stop wasting your time. It will not happen. Pastor Kemakena Hoshine, what is the meaning of that? He's a man. He's just that he's of God. Now, of course, this is not to endorse lack of growth. We must keep growing. But things can happen. Your Bible says Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. He went to a tree and the tree refused to give him food. You thought he would say, I am Savior. I show love. Tree, I will come back. The Bible says he cursed that tree. Jesus went to the temple and found people buying and selling. You thought he would go as a polite civil citizen and report to the Roman government. He went out as if he was strolling and took a whip and returned back. Your Jesus, the best of any man, is a man. You must learn to forbear. You must learn to forgive. Some of you, when you go back home this night, it's time to call your wife, your husband, your sister, your brother, whoever, and say, I love you. God bless you. The Tarok Nation, here we come, here we go, forward ever, backward never. Are we learning? In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Love mutual honor forbearance forbearance do you know as a man of god i don't i don't switch off my phone my phone is always on on silent i respond to an average of 600 to 800 text messages per day because of people calling from all over the world and sometimes i will read one text and here's what the text says. Apostle, you are a great man. We love you. Thank you for changing us. And I say, God bless you. And just while I'm about to start smiling, I read another text. Apostle, you must be a wicked man. I've been calling you and you are not picking. I used to know you years ago. You are not like that. You have become proud now. Then I read another one. Who do you think you are? You are not God. I'm calling you and you are not picking. I want you to pray for me. There's an emergency. You are not God. Now listen. If I choose to be angry and I call him, I say, do you know who I am? If you are not careful, you will spend the rest of your days typing your text in prison. No. There are times you have to look at those things and understand that the people do not mean evil. They are just communicating their pain how they know. You who is wiser, show it by your maturity. Are we together now? 
so sometimes I look at it and then a few times I can when I have the time I can call and I say okay what is the problem and the same person who was rambling and shouting ah, sir you called me and I said that's not the issue so what do I and he said look my life I don't and so I said so why did you say it was an emergency I just wanted your attention and I said let's pray God bless you that person you see may later become the greatest promoter of your teachings because of that encounter but it took forbearance are we together now when someone points his hand and insults you and you insult him back you have shown that two of you are the same when someone insults you and you can look at him let me tell you this many times it is better to be kind than to be right kindness is better than correctness you never go wrong being kind there are times you have to choose kindness number two when God gives you an opportunity listen and learn I hope everyone is learning when God gives you an opportunity and grants you access and you can shelve away that access and not use it against anyone so that people can be blessed you have demonstrated profound spiritual maturity an example is Jesus he could have called 10,000 angels one call from Jesus and angels who come to the earth that were more than the men and it was only one angel that used hailstone and killed about 150,000 people in one night imagine if he calls 1,000 angels we're all dead and yet he was led like a sheep to the slaughter and he went Jesus naked he was on his way going and you could imagine the people who were healed from his crusade so you are a fake man where is now the power can't you throw them away and he held and it was love that moved him he was more interested in a bigger cause than he was proving that he was powerful when the mighty do not use their might it is not weakness it is great strength great strength great strength when he hung upon that cross and he was watching the people he created insulting him let him die let his blood be upon us they even released a criminal and took your jesus and my jesus to the cross and when he hung there ladies and gentlemen hear what jesus said and learn from it with the pain of the nails with his body bleeding here's what he said father forgive them for they know not what they do how could you advocate forgiveness to someone who is not even repentant jesus was on that cross he had the power to say father the moment i die let everyone who is alive die who create men afresh but he stood there there are times when you will have every kind of power but god will prohibit you from using it so that you will create something that can outlive you he hung upon that cross you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign heaven and earth exalted i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me gave your life to set me free so i lift my voice to you in adoration dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye